I was lucky to have a childhood where I had a good amount of interaction with my grandparents, though now I wish I had more. My maternal grandfather was an important figure and influence in both my childhood and life. Sia is what I call him in Sinhalese, which translates to grandfather. Before learning about any world-renowned artist, I knew my Sia, and I saw his art through the eyes of a bright-eyed child. His paintings, his drawings, his sculptures and wall murals were always around in my grandparents' house and were a great source of awe and inspiration for me. As a child, I would often draw things and show my grandfather. My grandfather was, among many things, a teacher of literature and arts and an artist. His life reflects the era and place that he lived in. And had he still been alive today, he would have turned 100 years old this year. Though he's no longer physically here, his positive influences on me echoes on. As a child, when I moved to Canada with my family, I kept in touch with my grandparents through letters. This was before the internet. In one of his letters to me, my grandfather had given me a piece of advice that I have always kept in mind. This piece of advice is very dear to me and is one that took me a while to learn, if not still learning, and one which I will always keep in my heart forever. He had written this. Tamangi hisite tama atame sevenelle. It roughly translates to your own hand is your only sure source of shade. As far as I know, these words come from a Sri Lankan Buddhist cultural context and preaches that we are the source of our own salvation, that we are responsible for our own karma, our actions, and the consequences of our own actions, and that we are responsible for finding our own redemption and self-improvement. Even though this saying has this bigger picture or spiritual meaning that we are responsible for our own salvation, over the years I have learned that there is a more personal, practical, and everyday guidance in this saying as well. It is an advice on learning how to rely on our own selves and to rely on our own hands for shade from the sun's harsh heat and rays instead of relying on or expecting that others will do that for us. These rays of the sun are not only literal but also symbolic as well. Literally, the sun is not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it is an amazing thing. We need the sun. It allows for life. But too much of it or without understanding the times when it's too severe on us, we risk allowing it to hurt us unnecessarily. It's not really a fault of the sun. It's just being itself. But if we allow it to harm us without understanding our own limits or what's best for us, it's ultimately our fault that we allowed it to hurt us. This symbolism can apply in many other different situations too, whether it's facing situations or facing people, whether it's facing life-threatening enemies, or even facing our own family or friends who might think they know what's best for us. Even too much of a good thing can be detrimental. If we do not know ourselves enough to realize when something is going against what's ultimately right for us, when something is harshly or painfully affecting us, and if we then don't take steps to protect ourselves, to shield ourselves from it, then we will be doing ourselves a disservice. And ultimately, 
we aren't being there for our own selves with our own hands. Being our own source of shade means being there for our own self. So, what does this look like? It means treating yourself as well as you would others, maybe even more, with kindness, respect, and generosity. Giving credit to yourself when it's due. It means being honest and true with yourself. It means realizing when something is harmful to you and getting space or seeking help. It means protecting yourself with your hands instead of self-harming and self-sabotaging. It's about being self-sufficient. It's about learning to stand on your own two feet instead of grabbing hold of external things, people and substances as a crutch, thinking otherwise you'd fall. It's about learning to see that you're already made whole the minute you took a breath and is perfectly capable of being there for yourself. It's also about knowing who you are and knowing what you need and knowing your limits. It means to know yourself as a person well enough to the point that you realize when external forces are affecting you negatively. To know your own internal self so intimately to the point of knowing when we need to create boundaries, to say no, to say this is hurting me. No one else can do that for you, and no one will. No matter how good their intentions, each and every one of us is going through our own perceptions of existence. What's right for you is not always going to be right for another. What's right for another is not always going to be right for you. The comfort level of one is not for everyone. What's okay for one is not okay for everyone. The life path and lesson of one is not the life path and lesson for everyone. It's the idea that no matter where you are or whatever happens to you, that you only have yourself to get through things. And it's the knowledge that so long as you have yourself always there for you, then you will be okay. We are each individually our own source of salvation, and ultimately that means being able to rely on ourselves. By going within ourselves and learning who we truly are and what works for us, and being able to allow that in our external world and gently protecting ourselves from anything that will harm that authenticity. When I heard this saying while I was younger, I often wondered if that meant we can never rely on anyone else, or depend on anyone else to help us, or to protect us, or to give us what we need and want. I wondered whether that meant we cannot trust others at all. How sad is that? Can that really be so? But as I got older, I realized it really doesn't mean any of that. It's not an invitation to not ask for help or to not depend on one another to an extent because sometimes we do need help and we definitely need each other for survival and overall happiness. But if we each take that moment to first care for our own selves enough to be able to depend on our own selves and stand on our own feet, then when we do link and hold on to one another, our chain will be that much stronger and that much more valuable.
So let's take this moment to remember to love and be there for ourselves through thick and thin. To not rely too heavily on others, but to learn to be more responsible for our own selves. Because, after all, our own hand is our only sure source of shade. Though life got in the way, there's so much more I wish I could have asked my grandfather. So much more I could have learned from him. His arts, knowledge of history and his times, astrology, playwriting, you name it. But I like to think that he actually has taught me so much already. That simple piece of advice alone could guide me for a lifetime. And I am so grateful to him. This one's for you, see you. Happy 100th.